All right, so in this box, I have an LSI SATA controller that I purchased off of eBay. And in this video, I'm going to be installing this SATA. I'm going to, I'm going to be installing this uh, SATA controller inside my backup NAS, and I'm also going to be um, connecting it to some hard drives that I'm adding to this backup NAS just to expand the capacity on my backup NAS so I can continue taking backups of my primary NAS. So, in any case, I have a big. Um, ZFS Z pool of hard drives on this uh, on this NAS. It's basically a, a PC with a bunch of hard drives, and I don't have enough SATA ports on the system board to support all of these hard drives. So I picked up this. Uh, th this is basically an LSI SATA controller that was taken out of an old server. Now this is recommended above any of the SATA expansion cards that you can pick up. You can pick up a lot of SATA expansion cards off of Amazon or eBay or wherever else um, that are meant for desktops, but generally they have issues. Um, they might work okay for you, but generally what people recommend is getting one of these actual SATA cards that used to be inside a server, and they're going to be way more stable and just way better. So th these were recommended by a lot of people on the data hoarders subreddit, um, a subreddit where a lot of people run their own personal NASs. And um, yeah, generally people people recommend this and um, it allows you to add, like this one will let you add uh, an additional eight SATA ports and it's nice and stable. You wanna pick one up that has, it has to have the firmware flashed um, so that it will just create um, you know, a big bunch of disks and it won't try it. Um, I forget the details of why you need it flashed, but you, you don't want it to uh, be doing RAID for you or anything like that. And I forget all the details of exactly what features you get when they flash it. But usually the people selling it on eBay will say that they've flashed the firmware for you. In any case, this is, uh, this is it installed in here. So I didn't actually show me sliding the card into the slot, but this is what the card looks like in the slot. Um, and that's what it looks like at the back. Nothing to see there. But uh, yeah, here it is with the, the SATA cables coming out of it. And these are the hard drives that I'm going to be using. Um, I, I think I actually did not record the part where I plugged it into these hard drives. Um, but here it is. I cut away to it after having plugged them in. Those four hard drives on top there that are not secured very well at all are the new hard drives. And the hard drives on the bottom were the original hard drives. Now, um, I have some serious issues with this case. And apologies, I don't have any video to go with this uh, end part of the of the uh, video here um, so I did not record anything further but I'm still going to continue to do the voiceover and kind of tell you what I did here so yeah I anyways th this uh, so this backup NAS the, the case is pretty bad and I, I, I need a replacement for it I need to come up with some kind of solution for that it just does not hold all the discs that I want to and I'm trying to do something with uh, stuff that just is not designed for that. So um, the, one of the things I might to do list is to buy a new case or come up with some type of solution. I was 3D printing, um, I was actually 3D printing um, a, a actual um, brackets for hard drives that I could put in there, but I, I don't know if that solution is going to work that well. I might do another video on that. I have a bunch of 3D printed hard drive brackets just waiting to either be used or for me to decide to use, come up with another solution. So I haven't decided on that. Might do another video on that. Stay tuned for that. But uh, anyways, um, hopefully someone found this interesting. You might want to give me a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment down below. Um, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon. And that's about it for today. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys on that next video.